Today I'm standing up because we're doing something new on the channel. I'm making a series now called Road to a Thousand. So I'm trying to get to a thousand ELO in chess. That's the idea of it. And essentially the series is just going to be me showing a few games that I find quite interesting uh, on my road to that ELO level. Now I'm making these videos uh, as a substitute or as in a buffer in between my good quality videos because they take a lot of editing and or then let's just say they are better my other videos let's not call them high quality per se but they are better uh, I put more effort into them but they take way longer to make and this is just for me I have a goal of trying to upload weekly so doing this is just you know trying to accomplish that. So let's get into the game here because as you know the most important thing in life is your chess elo. That is the only thing that matters in this world. I played this during my time where I got footage for uh, my London video which I hope you've seen and uh, I hope you liked it. So naturally I'm starting out with pawn to d4 and my opponent answers with e5. Here I like to take it's still a book move and technically apparently it's called an England Gambit or something like now. So technically not a London, but I'm still thinking about the game as I want to achieve the London structure or close to it. So I he attacks with the queen. I like to take with this pawn because it's very easy to defend while still developing in the idea of the London. So now I move in with my bishop and here it's way better as the computer is showing us. It's way better to go out with your knight. Why? As shown by our opponent here, checking, uh, he's also threatening my bishop. So now the only way I can save it is by moving back. I spent four seconds on this move, and I go pawn to c3. Not a good move, because <laughs> my bishop is hanging. But I play this because usually in the London, when m many players will do this against you, where they go bishop b4, not queen. So that is usually answered with uh, pawn c3, and that is just what I do here. So I lose a bishop, now I'm down a bishop, but uh, now I get the knight out, which I should have got out uh, instead of the bishop. Now he wants to even out the game, very honorable, he sacrifices his knight. Uh, no, that was a blunder. We are at a very low level of chess here. He retakes with the queen. I move forward in traditional London structure fashion, uh, so I can get my light square bishop out in the middle. Now, here, what I should do is, I see his queen attacking b2, which is very, very traditional. A lot of players do this, and the best way to meet this is going queen out to b3. Because then you can take with a pawn, let's just show here. If he plays this, and then takes, then you have the pawn, and it's now open on the a file with your rook. Now, I take a little bit of a different approach on this. Uh, I play it... I defended instead by playing uh, queen to c2. Uh, an alright move. Uh, apparently it's better to go uh, d2. Not sure why you block in your, your queen, but I'm not. I don't know. Um, he then goes bishop out, and now I decide to offer up the queen trade. Because I suddenly remember, oh, you can do this. So he takes, and I take. And now my rook is out. He absolutely blunders a piece here, which I do not see. The bishop could have taken here. But now I was too excited with my rook file being open and I wanted to capitalize, so I move up. With my rook to a5. Not necessary at all. Uh, he defends with c6. Now it's no longer hanging, uh, so I can't take the pawn. I threaten his bishop. He takes, not realizing I just take as well. So now I'm up a bishop. Very nice. He castles. Uh, I continue in London fashion uh, by moving my knight to d2. Uh, he then makes a few pawn moves. I make a pawn move that doesn't make any sense because if he takes, he's threatening my uh, knight and I don't really, you know, I don't really want to place it anymore away from the board because it's hard to protect. But he doesn't see it and I don't see it and he does not see it and I don't see it, I castle. Uh, I still don't see it, even though he could also take my knight, uh, and I retake with the, the pawn, but that would weaken my ki king structure, so he should take here. Uh, now I finally take that pawn, finally, and 
As you're about to see, we are almost approaching it. I forgot to introduce this game as the first time I got a brilliant move. Hang on tight, hang on tight. Okay, he uh, moves his... Uh, I decided to trade my knights, so now both of his knights are off the, board, off the board, but I still have my knight. I now push forward with my pawn here so I can threaten promotion. Uh, he sees this. No, he doesn't. He just lines up his uh, ladder bros here, which is kind of dangerous considering I have a checkmate down here. Or not a, not a mate uh, yet, but it can become very dangerous. So I decide to open up. Open up, give my king a bit of space. I really don't like this move. One thing is uh, that his pawn is hanging, but a better move here objectively would just have been h3. Like the pawn here then pushes his bishop away uh, and still gives my, my king breathing room. Instead, his light square bishop can slide in right here. And this attacks my rook. I don't see it. I just move my bishop in. Uh, why? I don't know. I could have laddered my own rooks up, creating my own attack, but I don't do it. And he also doesn't see that he can take my... You know, that's a worth trade. He should do it. Now I take the free pawn, finally. Um, he threatens my knight, I think. I go into defend. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. My first brilliant move ever made. And I have no idea why this is brilliant. If I ask the computer to show me, I don't understand. Because we're playing at a level where... Why is this so brilliant? I don't get it. We're playing at a level where all these moves in succession, even though they're good moves, would never be made. Never, ever, ever, ever. So I'm not really sure what is happening here, why it showed me this, but it's thinking 50 moves ahead. And I'm all, I'm thinking like two moves ahead, max. The reason why I made this um, brilliant move, so-called, is I see his rook is attacking my, my pawn and I go to defend it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. That was the entire thought process behind it. It is currently the next morning because when editing this, I realized that I had disconnected my microphone. I don't know why I do this, but I fiddle around with it. You can kind of see the, the wire here. Yeah, I sometimes pull that out when I'm just sitting here messing around with it. So now I need to record this. Anyways, we came from the brilliant move, uh, the brilliant pawn move of the century. Uh, let's see if we can turn it into a win. Uh, he makes more breathing room for his king. An all right move. Not the best move on the board, but certainly not the worst. I definitely have the lead here. So I decide to begin to, you know, attack his rooks, get into his position. Uh, that's the idea of that move. He pushes more pawns. Uh, and I decide to hang a bishop for some reason. Um, I can't explain to you why I would do this and why not just move my bishop back to throw his bishop back. But uh, that was not what happened and he takes my bishop. So um, I'm only up two points here. And now, listen, okay, this move isn't great. This is the, the beginning, beginning of the end of this game. Spoiler alert. But the reason why I made this move was so that I could take with the knight... Um, and then threaten his his rook. But as you come to see, he takes, of course, as I knew he would. I retake with the knight. But as you come to see, I leave my one brilliant pawn. I just ruined the prophecy of the pawn. It was supposed to become a queen. Oh, God. This is the saddest way that I've ever lost a queen or a potential queen that was that close to promoting. Anyways, the game must go on. I line up my rook and my uh, my knight here. He begins to continue pushing pawns. This is, um, you know, this is a miss because he could have uh, begun to attack my uh, my back rank and, and really take control of the game. So, and that's just a hanging pawn, so I take it. Uh, he defends his king. Uh, I should trade here. And the reason why I should trade here is otherwise my knight is hanging. He doesn't see this and just plays his, you know, try to force this trade. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to trade for some reason. Because I'm thinking that these these uh, rooks are lined up now. Uh, so they're much more powerful. But apparently it is best to take. 
I didn't see it. He then forces a trade. Uh, I take and still my knight is hanging. He still doesn't see it, but he makes a better move, which is moving his rook down to the back rank of my king, attacking him. And now my decision to not kick this bishop really, really bites me in the ass. Because the only thing I can do here is rook back to my king. It, it's taken. And I lose the game. seems to fit those raindrops are falling on my head they keep falling